The bathroom is an ocean. But the kitchen is a farm. <laughs> Hi everyone, I'm Andy. Welcome to another Furniture Fables. What is it about farms? Is it the animals, the sunshine, the fresh air, the good tilled earth, the copious amounts of farm to table food? Is it the peace of mind that comes from a good honest day's work in the presence of family and community? Wait, no wonder we all have farms. People's deep love of the farm has become firmly and irrevocably entrenched in our design landscape. Sure, farmhouse styling has cooled ever so slightly since reaching its most recent fevered pitch, but farmhouse styling is here to stay. And now with its many variations, there seems to be a specific farmhouse style for just about everyone. There's modern farmhouse, industrial farmhouse, kitsch farmhouse, and perhaps one of the most enticing of all, coastal farmhouse. I picked this hammery coffee table up for free from a Facebook listing. Its owner was busy focusing on her own flip of a chair she had found by the side of the road and explained that the passing along of this rather large coffee table project would be beneficial for the state of her marital union. If you flip and share your life with a partner, you will of course know what I am talking about. I was more than happy to help, even though coffee tables are not the easiest pieces to sell. This design with its half flip top and label drawer pulls was just too fun to pass up. It was in fairly good shape, just some dings and scratches, one broken pull, but its main problem in my eyes was its dark, dark stain was amplifying its rather impressive mass. In other words, it just needed to lighten up. I started by taking out the two drawers and emptying out the table of the remnants of its former owners, which is always a fascinating process. Then I started to sand. It's true that cleaning before sanding is best, but I knew this was going to be a whopper of a sanding job and that I would create so much dust, it would be worth it to clean after I had gotten off all this tough varnish and dark stain. That one little section took quite a while. You can see I'm actually pushing on the sander. A big no-no. Not supposed to do that. <laughs> but I really didn't want to get out a chemical stripper, so I will admit I used some muscle. Next, I removed those top faux pulls. Because one of the drawer pulls was broken, I knew I was going to need to find a matching pull somehow if I wanted to still use those label pulls. But I did start to notice that these label pulls were a little thin and flimsy, and I wasn't all that surprised, actually, that one was broken. Okay, finally time to clean. I used some warm water and white lightning cleaner by Dixie Bell and a scotch pad scouring sponge ugh, and gave the whole table a thorough wash inside and out and rinsed every surface really well. Because it was a damp day outside, I dried off our friend with an old towel. Okay, I am going to be using Dixie Bell's No Pain Gel Stain for the first time ever. <laughs> this is the color Picklin White. I was really excited to try this product. I've heard such great things. Dixie Belt sells a sponge applicator for their gel stains, but I decided to use this sponge brush 
and actually found that I really liked how much control it gave me. Because I had never used the product before, I wanted to work in small patches, so I painted on about a single square foot or so of gel stain and then wiped that back with a lint-free cloth. It's really important when working with a stain like this to, of course, wear gloves, and to be in a well-ventilated area. You can see I'm outside and I'm still wearing my mask. I'm kind of sensitive to fumes, so I prefer to wear a mask whenever working with anything that gives off a strong chemical smell. I'll link the mask I'm wearing below in the description, as well as all of the products that I'm using today. You can also see I'm being really careful to wipe that stain back in the direction of the wood grain. I'm also making sure to get the stain into those grooves of that tabletop as well as get any stain out of the grooves with my cloth. You definitely go through quite a bit of cloths or rags when you stain, so it's great to have those in bulk. I have two brands that I tend to use, and again, you can find the info on those below. All right, I'm going to speed us up a bit but I'll show you the entire staining process for the table. I have to say, after working with more traditional stains, which are very splashy for lack of a better way of putting it this gel was great no drips at all Wow, I loved what the Picklin White did for this tabletop. Definitely looking more coastal farmhouse already. All right, next I kicked around a few color ideas, but of course decided to go with Vintage Duck Egg by Dixie Bell. Applied, of course, with my favorite chiseled wedge brush by Zebra. This color has become a huge favorite among furniture painters and I think it's pretty easy to see why it is just so pretty. We have chickens and our Aracana or Easter Egger, as they're sometimes called, lays eggs pretty much in exactly this shade. Its soft eggshell blue is so quintessential farmhouse, and yet it also takes you to the coast. If you are a collector of beach glass or farmhouse glass jars turned that soft aqua coastal blue after a time in the sun, you will love this color. Dixie Belle really hit the nail on the head with it. You'll notice that I just dove right in. No priming. If you've watched any of my other fables, you know that I'm kind of a fan of primer. The finish, though, on this piece was in such great shape, and I just decided to go for it and depend on that legendary chalk paint low prep rep. I have to say, I was actually genuinely amazed at how well the first coat covered over this dark stain. The two big drawers I brought inside and painted at the dining table, of course. <laughs> and then I put them way up high on the buffet hutch to dry 
so that they would be safe from the three cats who love to help. When I went back out to do my second coat, I noticed that because I had painted the body of the table with that flip top down, I had created a little line of paint on the underside of that flip top. So I got out my painter's tool and gently scraped off the majority of that line and then used a 220 sanding sponge to take down the rest of that little ridge before I applied my second coat. Okay, so after waiting a full three days for that gel stain to dry, that's really important, it was finally time to seal her up. I used a tack cloth to get off any little bit of dust and then got out my Dixie Belle clear coat in flat. I stirred it up well with a tongue depressor and then using my brush applied it to the top and sides of the coffee table. I was careful to always keep a wet edge and to not go back over and paint on top of what I had already laid down. After this first coat dried, I came back and did two more coats. You may notice a little bit of white. For a while I was toying with painting those drawer insets white, but ultimately decided against it. Okay, remember those cute label pulls? Well, I searched high and low, but could not find matching pulls in the right size to replace the broken ones. So I ordered a couple of other options, but was kind of underwhelmed. But then I found pulls by Amerok called Nature's Splendor. You'll just get a little glimpse of them here. And I just loved how their weathered nickel finish and carved leaf pattern went with the vintage duck egg color. Seeing those pulls, I suddenly had an epiphany, a wallpaper epiphany. And so trying my best to channel my engineering dad, I grabbed my tape measure and actually used it to help me paper the inside of that cool tabletop storage with the beautiful olive branch wallpaper by Joanna Gaines in charcoal. The link is below. Okay, Panger Bun says, let's take it to black and white as we put the drawers in for maximum reveal effect. Do you remember our dark and clunky, dinged and dated coffee table? And here she is now. Fresh and friendly, she's ready to greet the day bright and early in her vintage duck egg dress. That beautiful solid wood top looks like it's been lounging at the beach for some time, becoming weathered and washed out by the sun and the salt water air. And her gorgeous leaf design pulls and olive branch wallpaper remind us of the beauty of our natural world and the friendship of our neighbor. She's a true coastal farmhouse classic. Okay, but what of the numbers? Again, coffee tables can be tough to sell, which is strange given how much people enjoy their coffee. But in any case, my basic out-of-pocket costs for paint, sanding discs, top coat, etc. were right at about $30. But with six new pulls at $4.90 each and a portion of that beautiful wallpaper, I was in for an additional $40, putting my total out-of-pocket cost at $70. But I had confidence in this one's appeal, and with its hammery brand name, I listed the piece for $285, and it sold for that in two days, giving me a profit of $215. And bonus flip alert! <laughs> 
I reused my design concept for our coastal farmhouse coffee table for a Pottery Barn linen cabinet I had also picked up for free. With the exact same finishes, the vintage duck egg paint, the olive branch wallpaper, and Amerix Nature's Splendor Pulls, I sold that piece for $200 again in two days. I think this might be a winning design combo. If you'd like to see more farmhouse furniture fables, please hit that subscribe button. Like, comment, please let me know. If you had the chance, would you move to a coastal farmhouse? I think I kind of would. I, I think I'm ready to go. Cows, grazing, waves, crashing. Ooh, have you ever been to the Tillamook Cheese Factory on the Oregon coast? Literally, here are the cows and there is the mighty Pacific Ocean. It's incredible. Also, so much for joining me, my friends. I'll see you next time for more Furniture Fables. <laughs>